Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, episode 49, New Phones and a Mega Mistake. This episode of the Wireless Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. This is the show where we talk about mobile tech news, updates, and innovations. My name is Tony Hannity's, and tonight I have here with me my esteemed colleague, Mr. Sean Wilburn. Sean, how are you doing tonight? I am doing quite well. Just you, and your, you and your IPA. <laughs> not, not drunk only stupid. Not yet. Well, I'm working my way up to that point. <laughs> Just give me another beer. <laughs> Just give it to me. <laughs> We're getting there. Give me. I'm working my way to... I'm working my way up to drunkenness. It's a it's a little late on a Tuesday evening, so why the hell not, right? But Pretty we'll, much. We'll, hey, after a long day at work, you know, tired, re- need to relax, get your feet up. Well, we'll we'll try to keep it family friendly for all of you out there. You know, if you uh, if, for those of you that are listening or watching. So this is what I'm supposed to slam on the table and start qu- swearing <laughs> profusely, right? Oh no, you know, I should be the drunken blazing saddles. Not <laughs> <laughs> just. For those of you who do not know Blazing Saddles, it's a movie from Mel Brooks. Yes, it's a movie from Mel Brooks. Hey, can I can I say how rude it is to live in an apartment complex to have someone pull up outside and start honking the horn to get someone out to come out their apartment when you know there's like probably twenty people living there and they can't. I mean, <laughs> how, really? How, do you know it's, how does that person know it's for them? How do they, the other person in the other apartment know it's exactly for them? Exactly my point. Anyway, I'm just sorry. That, that literally just started happening a second ago. And I just saw someone turning around like, really? You... Oh, wow. All right, anyway. well, while Sean That's... contemplates uh, the, uh, the <laughs> issues that he has with his, uh, his co-inhabitants at the apartment complex, uh, for those of you that uh, want to get in contact with us, you can always call us at 707 707- 722-5299 or email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, got a new uh, tablet coming out from Samsung. Nokia is coming out with two new phones, one in the United States and one in the UK. Sprint is uh, poised to offer a purple phone. Ooh. Um, a phone from Sony is going to, not one of the big four, but a small bell. Uh, virgins want to give you money. Well, not virgins, but Virgin wants to give you money. <laughs> <laughs> See? That that's a that's a hook and real and what? Oh my god. Oh that's gonna be great, dude. That's how long we don't have to sacrifice them for some stupid ritual. But 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 then we're gonna bring it back into wholesome a wholesome PSA. Teens are texting more than they were two years ago while driving. So but before we do any of that, we actually want to take the time to thank our first sponsor, which is Audible. Com. Now, for the listeners and viewers of the Wireless Weekly, Audible is offering you guys a wonderful opportunity to check out their service while also getting a free book out of the deal. These books can range from $20 to $40, and they come in different genres like nonfiction, fiction, biography, autobiography, um, on topics like Potters of Harry uh, all the way to Fifty Shades of Grey to um, Google Apple and other tech stuff. So whatever you're into, I'm sure they have something there for you. They actually have over a hundred thousand books on the service, and it works on multiple mobile devices like iOS phones um, or even tablets, Android, Windows Phone. Even works with MP3 players for those of you who just use regular MP3 players. So uh, what's even nicer is that with certain books that you download from Kindle, you can switch between the Kindle book and then go to the Audible book, and it knows kind of where you left off, thanks to WhisperSync. And that's a really cool technology, specifically from Amazon. So to get this free book and the free 30-day trial, go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Once again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash lazy, and we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Samsung um, has finally announced the Galaxy Note 8, for the United States. Now, I don't think this is anything new. Um, we, we first saw this phone a little bit prior to Mobile World Congress, and we we're kind of waiting f- if, if the United States was even going to get this phone. And there it is, and it's beautiness. And it's really just the Galaxy Note 10.1, just two inches just kind of cut off on it. Uh, but also, it does have the S Pen, has a little bit of an updated um, Android uh, 4.0, one or four dot two uh, jelly bean. Uh, you 
also have features that come come with it, like Samsung Watch On. Also can be used as a universal TV remote. It's kind of big and bulky for that, but I guess you could. Sure. Uh, it will be available in stores like Best Buy, uh, Best Buy Mobile, HH Greg, Newegg, PC Richards and Son, Staples, and Tiger Direct. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. Um, we're we're gonna talk about another phone coming out from Samsung later on, but. Um, I, I don't know if Samsung necessarily needs to attack every almost every single inch of the market. <laughs> no, not no pun intended. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, well, I guess it was intended. But hey, if you do want to pick this up for yourself, let us know. Let let, let me know why you would <laughs> want this. Because I, I I guess there is a market that wants like you know maybe a Nexus Seven, but also wants a stylus that correlates to what's on the screen, and it's more than just a stylus. So I guess the, mm -hmm. the, the Galaxy Note 8 would be that extra inch, and you get kind of all be best of all worlds in that regard, um, the newest version of AirView and all the new features that, they're, uh, un that they've unveiled since Mobile World Congress. And for the, for the device itself, it's actually not too bad. Um, you know, I, I don't think it has, like, features that are amazing. Like, it's not going to make you sit back in your chair and say, wow, I, I can't wait for this to get on, uh, out on the market. But, you know, it, it does have a quad-core processor, two gigs uh, two gigs of RAM, and a storage capacity of uh, 16 to 32. So the $400 one's probably just going to be 16. And I think that's all that's going to come out. It only has a 5-megapixel camera, but if you compare that to the iPad, iPad 3, iPad 4, whatever, that also only has like a 5-megapixel um, camera. So in that regard, a little bit smaller, same quality camera and all the Android stuff that you could ask for. So um, it is only uh, it is only Wi-Fi. So I don't think that they're going to be unveiling it on a carrier. But hey, you never know. What about you, Sean? Are you kind of with me on this? Um, to too to, to many. Uh, I, I was many? just think. I was just thinking. Eight is enough. Eight is enough. Why well, don't Victor had the Galaxy <laughs> Note ten point one? <laughs> And uh, yeah, I don't maybe, know. Just, maybe he eight, thinks ten is enough. Dude, eight is enough. No, eight is enough. Sorry, that's that's how it's always been said. That's how the TV show said it, and that's how it's gonna be. What TV show? <laughs> I knew I knew you didn't know that show. All right, here we go. There's a show that used to be called Eight Is Enough. It was an old uh, sitcom. Uh, it was a TV series. I think. Let me see here. It aired back in like seventy-seven to eighty-one. You know, my generation, old people time. <laughs> it started Dick Van Patten. A. Hey. It is enough. So Nokia has two. <laughs> <phones. laughs> anyway, hey, real quick about the other thing. I don't know why it's got to be so big, but you know what? If there's a market, and they can make some money on it. And they think they can make a profit on it. Screw it. Why not? Whatever. If they can do it, then whatever. I don't care. They're, they're, I mean, they're, do you think they have? have so are do you, I mean their last quarterly results were pretty good, I guess. I mean, do you think they have enough profit or enough leeway to say let's just kind of throw this out there and see if it works? I think the amount of production cost, the product, the increase of production cost per that unit versus the other unit is probably so minuscule that they're just like, well, why not? It doesn't really cost us anymore, and we could hey, I can see the price tag of that thing you're drinking from, just so you know, and at the bottom of it. It was free. Hey, there it is. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, – no, I just it, – it really doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter. But All right. Okay. You All heard right. it here first. It doesn't matter. Now, yeah, two phones Samsung's that, making money. That's now, two, all phones that, that, two phones that might matter, depending on where you are in the, in the world, mm -hmm. um, have come out from Nokia. So, Sean? All right. The Nokia 520 has been announced for – the UK. Now, this was the phone that was announced at uh, Mobile World Conference 2013. That was earlier on, and it's going to hit the market well already. Yeah. So, if you're looking for a low cost uh, phone, we're talking $225, comparable United States to your currency to whatever country you happen to be in. Ta -da. Anyway, so this is a pretty pretty good option. It's a Windows 8 4 inch display, 1 gigahertz processor, 512 megs of RAM, 5 megapixel camera. It has apps like Skype. Like, because we all need Skype, and even some Sky, Sky 
drive storage already built in. And most important of all, it comes in a variety of colors because as we all know, that's really what matters on a phone is what it looks like when it's in our hands. So it ships in a different colors like white and cyan, but there's going to be other colors that are pretty cool. Now, if you happen to be in the United States and you have one, you are interested in getting a Nokia phone, then if you're a T-Mobile subscriber, uh, well, subscriber or you think about joining T-Mobile, then uh, that might be your option because they are getting the Lumia 520. And just so you guys know, the last one was a 520. Sorry. The last one was a 520. This one is a 521. Obviously, they're getting really, really scientific with their naming schemes of their phones here, but <laughs> it's just what it is. So this one here is going to work on T-Mobile's fast nationwide 4G network. <laughs> anyway, it's another uh, nice little phone that they're kind of coming out with. It's going to come out in May, available at Walmart. And, um, well, we'll see about how much it's going to be. Hopefully, it's going to be another low-cost, low-price entry level, but still pretty cool Windows 8. Phone. Yeah, this phone will also be uh, available on their new Unleashed plan. So you oh my God, get it's it. get Unleashed too. You mean like uh, not Jackie Chan? Dang it, Jetly. <laughs> Jetly. Yeah, yeah, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get it without a contract. You'll just have to pay like a down payment and then a monthly uh, stipend there on after until it's fully paid off. And um, uh, for those who don't know, I, um, I if, like how clear cut. The wordage is when you buy a phone. I went to T-Mobile's website and it says iPhone 5, $100 down, and then in kind of small letters it says $18 a month there on after, and then in parentheses it says full amount um, that you pay is like $500 some dollars or whatever. So um, as long as you can read, and it's not like too small, like it's like, oh, it's right there in front of you and there's no questions about oh I thought it was only a hundred dollars and I didn't have to pay any more money so but this this kind of entry-level phone I would only suspect it either to be twenty dollars down or maybe even fifty dollars down but I don't I don't see it any more than that now a phone that uh, has already been out for almost a year now and Sean and Vic of LTG are both uh, lucky to be able to sport it is the Galaxy S3 now the Galaxy S3 um, Right now is available in I believe three or four different colors. You got the blue, you got the white. You've also got a black color for some carriers. I think Verizon has brown or something. Um, and then there's the red one for AT&T. Now it looks like Sprint is going to be able to provide their customers with a purple one. Now I'm trying to bring up the the, the uh, photo of it, but for whatever reason, it's been it's broken. But um, <laughs> I was any just case, about to send you a message about that. Like, dude, yeah. the freaking link is dead. I want to see this chrome, dude. Well, here, why don't why don't we do this? We will uh, go I'll, to our I'll, friends. I'll, we'll go I'll, to our friends at Engadget, and we, we got go. this picture right here. Um, and there it is, and it's glory. And I mean, that's it. It's Where's it's your... the Galaxy S3 in purple. I mean, it's not like you can't go down to your cell phone modder shop and they could do it for you for maybe about the same price or, or cheaper if you already own the Galaxy S3. But in any case, if you wanted to get a phone that is colorized specifically for you, like your like school colors are your school colors are purple or something like that, this is it. <laughs> Oh, an honor for this phone, dude. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, the phone originally... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know what song that was, right? The phone originally goes for uh, 550 bucks. <laughs> All right, the phone originally goes for $550. Um, it's a uh, $150 in store, and then after a $50 mail-in rebate, it goes down to $99.99. Now, this is Sprint, so it is a two-year contract, so just be aware of that. Um, there's definitely a lot of phones coming out. There's the new Galaxy S4 coming out, and the, and the HTC One as well. So you might want to hold back on this one, uh, but it is a really good price. So if you're kind of, you know, not really, um, if you're kind of hurting for cash, but you still have a little bit because of the tax refund, this might be a good, a good choice for you. So, but yeah, this is poised to come out um, on Friday, I believe, on April 12th. So yeah, um, if and when we finally get the official word on it, we'll let you guys know. Uh, next up, Cincinnati Bell. Now, I obviously haven't heard too much of them or from them because here in the West States, 
we're, we're nowhere near <laughs> Cincinnati. Um, I don't know geography, but I know that much. Um, so anyway, Cincinnati Bell, uh, they offer their own uh, wireless service, and they are the first United States carrier to offer the Sony Xperia ZL, not TL. Now, the ZL is actually a beautiful phone. I mean, it, it comes in four, sorry, three different colors, black, white, and I guess maroon or rouge, whatever. Um, but in any case, it um, what's really nice about it is that it has a 5-inch full HD display, and it also has the mobile Bravia Engine 2. So uh, we've seen this display on the Xperia Z that was touted at CES, and I believe Rad actually got a chance to see it in person. And from what he says, is uh, the the graphics look amazing? It's bright. It's the the contrast is very crisp, and um, it also has a 13 megapixel rear shooter with uh, HDR video, 1080p, uh, superior audio and noise reduction. Um, very good battery, NFC, infrared. Wow, infrared. That's rare. Um, Android 4.1, a um, quad-core processor mm. with, the two, with two gigabytes of RAM. Um, if you're starting to salivate on this, I, do, I, don't, I don't blame you. I mean, this is actually a really, really good phone. And Sony's slowly but surely starting to actually come out with some um, really nice devices. Now, this is kind of pricey, though. On a two-year contract, it is 250 bucks, and it doesn't seem like there is any kind of um, mail-in rebate deal. But, you know, if Cincinnati Bell is your carrier, the only other phone that is a fairly good contender at this moment is the Nexus 4, and by now that's already kind of an old phone. Um, and the Nexus 4, I think, is only 100 bucks or some, 150 something like that. But, uh, yeah, this phone will be available on May 1st. So it's still a little bit of ways, maybe two, two weeks away from now, so if you can wait, then, uh, then, then hold on to your money. But, Sean, you used to be... Sony guy, does this make you kind of want Sony to uh, come back to AT and T with a nice with a nice phone? Or are you Samsung out now? No, no, no. This looks. Are like you a very are you open to the future? I'm always open to the future, dude. I have no problem with HTC, LG, um, Sony, Samsung, whatever. It's just like when the time comes for me to get a new phone, I'll do like I said, always. And I, and you can hold me to it. You can go back and listen to me in the past, and I'll say this again. I look at all my options and figure out make the best choice at what I'm looking for. Brand, of course, does factor in, but at the same time, as long as I'm comfortable with if something else may have the features I want, even though I may not be comfortable with the brand or may not know the brand as well, I'm always willing to give it a shot. Now, you but, can still mm -hmm. buy the uh, Xperia ZL directly from Sony's website, and it is unlocked. <gasps> but because of that, it makes it very, very expensive, so just be aware of that. What would it be like talking about seven hundred dollars something? Not seven hundred, but like five hundred fifty, six hundred dollars, mm. something like that. That's not too bad. Well, you it's not too bad. I mean, it's about right. Yeah, you were mentioning something before I uh, abruptly um, Okay, so you. do you know WKRP in Cincinnati? Another sitcom from the seventies to eighties. Oh my God, dude! You we well we so need to talk about this later. All right, yeah. Is it on Netflix? <sighs> no, it's then not. Would... It might be on Netflix. I don't know. Let's go look. <laughs> Do you, oh, you really need to know your old sitcom? Well, you don't really need to know them because they weren't really that good, but still. They were iconic because they were on TV when I was growing up. And that's all that matters. Would they be on Nick at Night when I grew up? Because I, 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 was, I, was I was an 83 baby. Or they might have been, been post-Nick at Night by the time you were growing up. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, good thing Netflix. Any of you out there know? <laughs> Let us <laughs> okay. know. If you know WKRP and 8 is enough, then you're probably as old as I am. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about virgins. Yay! Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I was also going back, having a dragnet moment here also. If you Yay, yeah, yeah, I know dragnet, see? See that, mo see, that movie, you remember that was an old black and white TV show, right? Well, I, I love the TV show. When they made the movie into a comedy, I was like, I'm not sure, but they did okay. Yeah, the movie was so bizarre, bonkers. I was just like, oh, this yeah, is Yeah, they funny. did okay. Yeah, because <laughs> the movie kind of was funny and it stood on its own. Like, all right, yeah. for a stupid movie, this is great. But anyway. Like, hey, that's Friday. Okay, go on. <laughs> all right. Virgins want to give – no, Virgin Mobile want to give $100 to T-Mobile Renegades. Virgin Mobile is actually targeting T-Mobile. 
this is almost like um, what do you call that thing where they're go they're chopping out the next thing higher? Like when they talk about the not survival of the fittest, but you know that thing when it's like this uh, ecosystem's eating at the next ecosystem bigger, and that ecosystem's coming on at the next ecosystem bigger or something. Um, I don't know, or maybe it's just something I've seen in fish movies and cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> Fish movies and cartoons. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, so Team Virgin Mobile is taken to, is taking on T Mobile, and they're giving you a hundred dollars remake if you switch over to their plan. Aww. So now here's the deal: they're, they're um they are see offering plans as low as thirty five dollars a month. They they have this big old banner that says, "Hey, our plans are at least five dollars a month cheaper." We also offer unlimited messaging and talk. We do the four G also, and any they're talking about the three G speeds versus two G speeds, and how much the cost is going to be, and the fact that you get some money for a credit, and you know they got the same phones for less money. So if you are in Virgin Mobile. I mean, sorry, if you're on T-Mobile and you want to jump ship and go to Virgin Mobile, well, here you go. Check it out. You might actually save a little money on this thing here, I guess. You know, I was uh, I was looking at this because um, Virgin Mobile, for those who don't know, is an MVNO Sprint. Sprint's, you know, getting big with their, with their network and possibly merging with Clearwire, most likely definitely merging. With SoftBank, so they're they're definitely in the running of you know getting up there with their network, and um, there wouldn't be any reason why uh, Virgin Mobile couldn't be um, a good contender against you know companies like Metro PCS. So that, that's my thing. Like, I wonder how Metro PCS is going to, if they're going to combat this, like, or if they think that they're better than Virgin, like they don't have to respond to this because i mean that that's the those are the two ones that when someone says what's a good prepaid at the top of my head I'm like well there's version mobile and then there's metro pcs and then there are the others and like then i get I, I get asked like so what are the differences and usually it comes down to carrier uh, uh coverage but if you're using it you know in metropolitan cities and maybe down i5 down to la both carriers are fine so I don't know. Do you, do you think Metro's going to do anything to kind of keep their customers or win them back, or are they just going to wait to see if something happens between them and, and uh, T-Mobile uh, when uh, Metro PCS stockholders vote on the acquisition on this Friday? You know what? I have no idea what, they're, I have no idea what Metro's going to do. But I can tell you what Virgins are going to do. No, I have no idea what, I have no idea what Metro's going to do at all. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Lame answer. Best I can do. All right. All we, Sean, all we want is an honest answer. <laughs> as lame as it might be, it's honest, you know? Yeah. See, that's why I have still been thinking about Dragnet the whole time. And it's just the very funny part at the end of that movie when, you know, because Dan Aykroyd always called her the Virgin Connie Swale. The whole movie, <laughs> yeah. up to the very, up to the very end, when he says, "I took a long, he said, I took a long night and then hung out in the company of the kind of Connie Swale." And then Tom Hanks is like, and "He's like, wait, wait, don't you mean the Virgin Connie Swale?" And then you see that dirt, 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 dur, and he looks at the camera. It is the funniest. It's so great. It's so great. <laughs> they actually, yeah, they they definitely had a lot of good on screen chemistry as partners. For for uh, for that show movie, so. <laughs> yeah, go watch it. Yeah, All right. and Dan Aykroyd played his part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I was kind of hoping Vic would be on this show or Rad, and simply just because they're they're fathers, as I am. And but Sean, I know you you Aww, must. Have, I'm not good enough to be on the show. I'm just gonna have to drink my beer. Sean, you must have nephews or at least little kids that are in your life that. You know, you would you you would not be very happy to see them in any kind of uh, accident that was caused by texting. You are correct about that. So since 2010, uh, the numbers of teens that are texting while driving has doubled, and um, I don't know if you if you've ever seen this PSA. I, this PSA of this screenshot of these three girls is originally from England. And it's the most graphic PSA of texting while driving that I've seen. It's just there's blood, there's like just horror. Like it, it it's a scare tactic to stop you from texting while driving, but it's still not working because 
teens are still texting a lot, and not just texting, they're still talking, or they're using some sort of electronic device behind the wheel. According to the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Association here in the United States, three out of five of teens will answer the phone, and two out of five will text while driving. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, every once in a while, if a text comes in and I know it's really important, I might respond to it, but we're... Um, but we're talking about teens that are doing it on a nonstop basis. Like they'll get in the car while texting, continue texting, and not even realize that they backed up into you know lamppost. They're like, well, I they're texting. Wow, I just backed up into a lamppost. Maybe I should stop texting. Um, you know, the carriers have tried to step in and try to do it at the carrier level where they're. Um, they've implemented applications that notice how fast you're actually going due to the accelerometer on the phone, and it will halt any kind of text messaging, and the person texting your phone will get a auto text saying, I'm driving, please, um, I will respond once I get to a safe location. And usually that sounds like a really good idea, but we just kind of, ever since texting became a thing 20 years ago, or maybe not 20 years ago, like 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. Um, or less than that. Sorry, but do you get my point? Like, er ever since like we started texting, we've started texting and driving, and it's just become habit. And now someone's trying to break that habit. It's kind of hard for everybody. Um, All right, so, so I'll say this much. Here's some, here's some solutions to this that go on. I, I, so I just want oh. to give my solution, oh, okay, and then solution? you can give yours. So um, I know Vic is not a fan of the OEM car docks that are made specifically for your phone because every time you get a new phone, you have to buy a new car dock. And I was the exact same way. Here's the main reason why I'm for it. Those car docks generally, when they're made specific to that phone, also put the phone into what's known as vehicle mode, and some phones will automatically um, know that while you're driving, you want to do a lot more hands-free control. So if somebody texts you, it will ask you by voice, um, do you want to listen to the text? And you just say yes. And, or do you want to respond to the text? You just say yes. There are some third-party apps that you can download to do this as well. But it's just, you know, um, this, this doc can do three things in one. It makes everything hands-free. It gives you a head-up display for, like, GPS. Um, you can still control your music if that's where you put your music. And then also, if it, if it connects to your your uh, cigarette lighter, you know, it still charges your phone. So it's, it is an extra expense. Like, usually they're 50 to $60, but it could be a lifesaver for you. But that's, that is the physical hardware solution for, for you. If you cannot put the phone down... That's what. That's one of the uh, solutions that I would recommend. Sean, what did you? All right. So it's not too dissimilar. Um, it's kind of in the same ballpark. So what I was thinking is the for this entire issue that's happened. I'm thinking like the reason why this is even happening is the fact that texting, as you stated a minute ago, is a relatively new thing in our society. It's what a couple, ten years old, and that's still unfortunately relatively new. And more and more phones are making it out there. Our lives are becoming more and more. Uh, this, these capabilities are now becoming more feasible, and now we have more and more people getting behind the wheel, and it's happening, and it's just, this is the snowball effect. So what we really do need is to find a way or get the, a little, really, I think the car manufacturers are going to be the people who need to solve the problem. It really has to be done by the car manufacturer, and it can't be this bickering, we got our system, we got our system, we got our system going on here. You know, with our system, you have that, and they, they should put a fee on it so that with this fee, you can have access. No, no. This entire, like, we need to start really linking. Like, the technology is now finally getting to the point where we can start linking our phones to our cars in an efficient way. Now, we need to get the voice recognition technology up to the point where we can start just verbally saying our texts really well. Like, it's getting close. Like, Google now does a great job. Android does a great job already. But we need to get that into our cars. We need to get that into car stereos that can be retrofitted back so that when a, when a quote-unquote, teen gets behind the wheel and this isn't just for teens this is for grown folks too because i see just as many adults running around texting and driving just as many as a, as much as i see kids doing it just as foolish as it is and everybody who does it it is a foolish move to do just saying it outright um you just 
if the car manuf- if the car manufacturers could find a way of doing it, and I'm not even saying government because I'm not even saying they shouldn't even get involved in this. The car manufacturers need to find a way of doing it as the right thing to do for their consumers to keep them alive, so that people will will do what they want to do, which is communicate while driving. They're going to do. We're humans are going to want to do it. We just need to have it in a way that does it right without so many roadblocks that are monetary, financial, or oh, you know. It, it's just it's the beginning of the technology. I know we can go it, but that's the real that's where we need to go. But temporarily, yeah, get a car doc. Use the voice feature on your phone. Use Siri and use uh, Google Now. There's a little plus sign that says there. So if you really have to make a response back, you can just set it up so that you can get one apps that automatically hit, so that when you hit a button on the main screen, it takes you straight to the message and it could bring you straight to the voice prompt. So you could just say, blah 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 blah. And just let it send it out, and this, and so you can keep your hands on the wheel. Preferably, we would want you to just have a Bluetooth earset talking, or just not drive and talk at all, and just drive and be safe. But if you're going to do it, car dock for now. But the car manufacturers, I think they really should get on a get on the ball and really like group together and make a um, what do you call them a consortium of people, mm-hmm. and yeah. just really figure out a system that works, and then work with Google and work with Apple and go to say, what protocol would you guys use that we can use that all this works and it's universal? Can I and tell you what it is? Days. What is it? Bluetooth, Bluetooth yeah. 4.0 or okay. 4, 5.0 or whatever the future is. Because that, that, that's, um, you know, when, uh, if, you, if you look at older car uh, setups, you know they they are set up like for iPhones to like the BMWs. They're made specifically for these versions of iPhone to dock your iPhone right there. It looks all nice, looks beautiful, you, you know. But the fact of the matter is that dock is only as good as however long that you keep your iPhone. And if you get the iPhone five, then that dock is now just going to become an ashtray or it's just going to become a thing that you can place your your receipts in. So mm-hmm. it, with, with Bluetooth, you can keep your phone in your pocket, and if they improve the technology where that's a little bit more universal, it doesn't matter if you're an Apple guy or Google guy or Microsoft or even BlackBerry. If, if Whatever uh, commands that you want to be able to use over Bluetooth, um, these, these OEMs with the stock stereo should allow you to control some of those things. Now, yep. um, they they already they do some like app link. I know Ford has this kind of app link where mm-hmm. they have their own apps and they have their own Ford app store and they somehow link over to your phone. I believe that's a Bluetooth link over to your phone. So if you can do that for Ford, um, I'm sure other uh, other manufacturers can do it. For 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 their cars too now yeah but it I, needs to I, be universal that's I agree. the key I agree that's, that that, that is the big thing and what what's mm-hmm. happened in the past is that you know like like I said BMW's like this is a beautiful dock for your iPhone it's like well I don't want to get an iPhone then you know Android guys and and BlackBerry guys have kind of been you know tossed aside um, there's a, there's always you know if you look at the go to Best Buy and you look at the third party radios that you buy, a lot of them will say iPhone compatible, and then just recently that they're they're starting to say like Android compatible, and they're not even really Android compatible. It's just an auxiliary port that goes into the headphone jack of your phone. It's you know it's not really Android anything. It's just auxiliary port. Um, so if they really um, if the consortium behind Bluetooth, because I know there is a special interest group, the Bluetooth SIG behind Bluetooth, mm-hmm. uh, if they work together with car manufacturers or whoever else they need to work mm-hmm. with to do this, um, I'm sure it would be definitely in everybody's best interest. Is mm-hmm. there money in it? Is there mm-hmm. money in it? Yeah, there would be money in it because you could show off how cool it is to finally have a car that is safe. They already We already have cars that are parking themselves. We have car. They're trying to get cars that are driving themselves. This is just a car that can text for you, a car that can actually do these things that make the experience. Like, here's a commercial already. Imagine this, okay? And um, all, all you listening out there, imagine this. You, you see the car driving down the road, the person, it's a rainy night at the road, just like they have the driverless car and all that and all that. You just simply say, um, you say, need to send a message or something like that. Sometimes you just need to send the message. 
but you just can't take your hands off the wheel because it's unsafe or something. Now featuring blah, 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 sync, safe sync. Now a car sync feature. Just verbally say your message and your text will go out. And it'll be, and if people will think, oh, we've had this before, mm-hmm. but this time it says it works flawlessly and it works with your car stereo, meaning that it's automatically there. It works with all these other, th- it would be a really good move. And they, and here's the deal. Like they should, it, the OEM companies who make these home these car stereos are the same Alpines pioneers who are making all the aftermarket decks. They're the same people. So you go to the OEM manufacturers, you make sure they have the compatibility. They can flood the market, aftermarket and OEM at the same time because the technology can hit both of them and hit about the same point. They they usually do yearly refreshes every year of their decks. So why not? You know. So he, here's 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 another thing. Um, if if, if it's it's the radio OEMs and the third-party OEMs doing this. Why wouldn't? Why would they want to do it in the stock of the car if they want you to buy the third party? Because they want to use it as a means to show how. Because here's the deal: they're they're okay. The car stereo is the one of the oldest devices that are in the car that has distracted us and caused accidents for years upon decades upon decades. It's already been happening. People playing with the car stereo, can't get the tape out, run into somebody, run into a tree. It's happened. So it should be in the interest of a car stereo company, like a car mon- a car company themselves, to make sure the people who are buying their product is as safe and healthy and protected as possible so that they will complete- come back and buy their product again. It absolutely makes sense for them to do it. They don't have to do it to try to make money right now. They need to do it just to say, look, this is the right thing to do because we want to make sure it's we want to make sure that you guys are safe, that you can use our products and enjoy them to the fullest without endangering your life. So bait and switch. Okay, I get it. No, not now, bait and I'm switch, kidding, dude. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Now now from a user standpoint, here let me give you an, one reason why I know people don't use this voice activated system and everything. There's no privacy. So what do you tell somebody that already doesn't want to do the whole Bluetooth speaker phone? Like, well, now we're going to put you into a car that is speaker phone, not just for your phone calls, but also for your text messages, which can tend to be that much more private. And then, by the way, you're going to carpool with all your work buddies. If you're carpooling with all your work buddies and a very, very private message coming and you're driving, you just shouldn't check your phone. Yeah, but it's going to come in. So is it going to, is it going to come in and say, message from Anna Kordakovich reading? Like, oh, God. He's like, Would you I- want to read it, auto-read or not? I mean, that could be part of the okay. technology. That's part of the perfection right. of the idea. Like, when they put this together, that question needs to come up in the consortium. What happens if you got your mother in your car and your other, your other person, your girlfriend, calls and gives you a really freaky message? Well, we got to figure that out, you know? <laughs> so... Right. That should be just part of the discussion. With anyway, so as far as the people doing it, teens and non-teens out there, just get car doc, get car docs, or get those car dashboards. I did a review of one called the iDoc, uh, i oh, man, iBolt. the iBolt car iBolt. dash. I just we also just recently did another one recently for the um, the i i mighty grip, excuse me, the mighty grip, and that's another one. These things are they use suction to stick to your windshield and they hold the phone in position by having it in that position. Number Number one, you don't have to have it in your hand to do texting. You can kind of see what's going on at a distance. And it just also, it it makes it actually to the point where you don't want to text anymore because it's kind of right there. And then if you do want to do it, I mean, you can actually just hit the speaker button. It's like, speaker button. And you keep your hands on the wheel and be able to just verbally say it without having it to be down here. So, I mean, stop texting while driving. Try to use a car dock when possible or a bolt one of those eyebolt things like that. And then car companies, car manufacturers, please get together. Stop bickering and stop trying to find your own tech and work together with other companies. And let's figure out a real solution to the problem and keep everybody safe so you can have more customers to sell stuff to. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sean, on that. Now, two phones... Yeah, two, two, <laughs> two phones that have been... Um, they're most likely uh, some of the most uh, biggest offenders of being in the hands of teens and uh, or just drivers in general of texting and calling while driving are both the Galaxy S3 and and I and the iPhone or I guess any version of the iPhone. And uh, recently, there was a study that went out or a survey rather that 
showed that the Galaxy S3 is simpler than the iPhone. Simpler, yes. Dun, dun, dun. I know. Simpler than the, I, the iPhone, which is the simplest thing I've ever been created of all times. Remember? The, the iPhone. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Steve. No, no. So here's the deal. So um, the the branding agency called Siegel and Gale ran this study. They in, they had 400 people, where the people the amount of people they interviewed, talked to, whatever, and they said that overall, like here's the deal. The Samsung. Um, let me see here. At the top of the simplicity range or something. I think Google was at the top of the range. Number two was McDonald's and other things. And Apple was fifth and Samsung wasn't even on the list. But when you're talking about this product, the iPhone versus the Galaxy S3, that's where Samsung win, wins. And they said it's because of easy to use features, high speed data transfer and instant photo tagging and sharing. Photo features like that, they just said it just worked better on the Samsung phone and people who had it were just a little bit more satisfied, I guess, with it. So. Everyone who had a Galaxy Galaxy phone, congratulations. Your phone is simpler to Ooh. use than the iPhones. I know you're happy, right? Yeah, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, there is something else interesting here about that, and it looks like, um, let's see here, Samsung happens to be a client of this company in some way, and Apple is not. So there's some other some other stuff going in there. So all you iPhone people, before you uh, get too sad, get your conspiracy hats ready to go. There's some extra stuff happening here. It's not quite clear, but it looks like Samsung might know this company or know them in some way. So we'll see what's going on about this. So we'll keep you updated. <laughs> see if they're really simpler. It's one of those things, huh? Isn't it always... Like, I mean, it's how many studies have you seen where, like, Microsoft does these great studies and the very end of it is sponsored by Microsoft? And Google does it, too. I've seen it quite a few from them, too, and I'm just like, really? You like, can't study a- yourself. I think we're awesome. What? I mean, I think Google's awesome. But you just said we. I meant it- Google. <laughs> <laughs> NBA is rigged. NBA is rigged. I'm telling you, they actually saw in the NBA rig, they had a, high, they give, they had a coach giving a high five to a, a referee. <laughs> LeBron I'm gonna James, do it, baby. I'm going to do it forever. <laughs> it, it was so much of it, too. It was like... <laughs> there are videos and videos of it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's multiple videos. He's all LeBron right. James, dude. He should know the camera is always on him at all times, no matter what. <laughs> I think that's why, that that's why he does it. LeBron like, I don't James. Care, I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Le- yeah, so LeBron James Illuminati video. You got it from different right. angles too. It's like, what angle is this? At? This is hilarious. Now, um, coming up in the, or actually going on right now, if you, if you have been waiting patiently to see the next HTC One, uh, which is their latest flagship phone, which has been going through a couple of delays, um, in certain cities they will have what's called. Showrooms. Now, these are going to be uh, specifically touting the HTC One. So, if you have questions about the HTC First, don't go there. <laughs> Just wait till it comes out on AT and T, which is this Friday. Um, but yeah, they're going to have showrooms or show off rooms um, in certain cities. So, here in San Francisco, we're going to have one. So, I'll be going to them. Um, I think on Monday, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, LA, and Washington D.C. So. Um, yeah, that just letting you guys know about it. Uh, I think some of them are going to be at malls as well. So if you, um, where it's going to be for us is in the Embarcadero Plaza, which it is a mall, but it's kind of it's not like your your standard mall. It's kind of an upscale, outdoorsy, indoor kind of mall. I don't, I can't, I don't know how to explain it, but um, but it's where they have it is in this kind of portable outside the mall. And um, I, I think there's like nice lounge chairs in there. It says HTC One, and they're gonna show off boom sound and and uh, all the stuff that they that they announced for the HTC One. So I'm excited. I have a friend who works for HTC's rep uh, rep company, so I'm hoping to see him there. And I'm going to uh, I'm gonna see if I can coax him to get get me a phone before all of you. But yeah, that's just me. Ta-da! Now um, come. <laughs> coming out of Apple, um, coming out of Apple is um, 
is something that we're going to be seeing probably at the WWDC, which is a worldwide developers conference that happens every year. And uh, as of lately, every year, they announce the next iOS. And uh, the next iOS 7, seven. Is, is, well, we don't know. But we do have a concept. And the concept is all about 7. So it looks like Apple is talking about 7. You know what the seventh color is? Green. Which I'm just loading. I'm just so full of it. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a I rainbow? Because I'm like, say, that's never... not true. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not rainbow true does all. not do that. No, not... I'm sorry. <laughs> That would just be great. So, <laughs> so real quick, I just want to point out for everyone who's watching the video of this uh, podcast here that on, they have all those green items here. And my phone, which is the Galaxy S, has the same color green. So who's copying who here, huh? Huh? Anyway, so we had a guy named Federico Bianca, and his uh, – Bianco, excuse me. Did me my apologies, sir. He's a YouTube user, and he um, – Came by and he came up and said these are a couple future features that are going to be on there. So one feature that he talked about is called Quick Reply. Um, I guess this is something that you do. It makes it easier and quickly to reply to some other features. I think I mentioned a minute ago, I think o there's aftermarket apps to do this, but it's going to be like an OEM thing that does that. Um, there's a feature that called Shelf, which is like something that kind of – supposedly downloads content from your browser, like in a PDF format. So instead of putting it in your photo stream, it just makes it a little easier to do. There's other things like that. So there's quite a bit. And we have a whole video here that that's from the YouTube, on the, um, from the um, video that the guy put out. So if you want to come check it out, there's a website you should go to. The website happens to be ours, lazytechguys.com. The name of the article is called I iOS 7. Just look up iOS 7. If you're watching the video, you're probably seeing a little bit of the concept video right there, but come check it out. See what they're, look, what pe they're saying is going to be in iOS 7 and for all you users out there and, you know, hope you're happy. Check it out. All that kind of good stuff. Have you played with iOS seven or iOS in general, like like an iPhone or anything? Yeah, of course like I have. Of okay. course I have. Um, is there is there any feature uh, on on Android that you're like iOS people are going to go bat nuts when it comes over to iOS? Not really, not really. Every, it seems like they both do their own things. Uh, the only thing I want the iOS users to have is a bigger screen. And the reason I say that is because I constantly, I, I see, I get a lot of people who come through my job, and they all have a lot of iPhones come in there because that's a music store, and Apple owns music stores, not because they own them. It's just that they're the company there. Um, so when I see people come in, and I usually see older generation people coming in with their iPhones, they, they can barely see it. They're always squinting. They're always really looking at it, trying to type on it, like, hang on, it's, hang on, let me find it. And I'm just looking at it like, dude, you should have a bigger screen. If you had a bigger screen, none of this would be an issue with you right now. And I'm looking at my screen, and then they look at my screen. They can see it from halfway across the counter be like, oh, yeah, I can see that. I'm like, you should really have a bigger screen, just really. <laughs> What's your phone number? Okay, hold on. I can't it, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not, not eight inches like that stupid thing we talked about at the beginning of the show. <laughs> well, that's actually what, what I wanted to very, yeah. very cleanly kind of segue into. <laughs> no, uh, so that's if, too if big, you're, dude. Eight if you're looking for – well, no. <laughs> maybe eight inches is too big for a tablet um, or for a phone, definitely. But, you know, like I was saying, Samsung – I guess they have enough disposable income or or enough assets to say, hey, let's just make every single screen size possible and we'll just throw it out there and, and we'll just see which sticks. And the Samsung Galaxy Mega is coming to fruition. Now, again, I don't make up these names. These are real names. Um, according to Sam Mobile, the Galaxy Mega, there's going to be two variants of it. There's going to be a 5.8 phone and a, a 5.8 inches, and then a 6.3 inches. Now, let's think about this. 6.3 inches, that is like maybe this far away from being the Galaxy 7 tablet. Are you which, sure that's 6 inches there, um, dude? I mean, I know you're a guy and all. It's hard for us to measure that correctly. So anyway, <laughs> so the, the, the what I was asking Sean uh, before the show is like it's, at what point do we just say stop? 
I mean, because like it, it's it's getting a little much. I mean, I understand mm -hmm. that you're trying to you're mm -hmm. trying to cater to almost every single person out there, and you just can't. I, I you you just can't. You got to throw out. You got to do what you, what what you need to innovate on best and work with that. Because I mean, if you look at the specs of the Mega, aside from the screen size, there's really nothing to write home about. I mean, the, the 5.8 uh, phone will have a 2600 milliamp battery. I mean, right now, that's that's not a lot of battery for that size phone. And if it's going to be um, if it's going to be an HD display, you know, then it, it's it's going to run out very quickly. It's going to be the same issue as they, they, they have they've been before. It's only an 8 megapixel rear shooter. Um, you know, you, it, if you want to play this feature game, this feature battle, it needs to at least be 12 to 13 megapixels. Um, quad core, fine. Samsung's doing their quad core thing, but really, maybe an octa core uh, should should be behind this, um, because at at this point, I, I just think they're they're just making a mega mistake. But John, do you have anything that you want to add to it? Um. You know what? Because people, the, the if, here's, okay, you know what? I, I, I here's the deal. I understand your point. If they're if people are going to be just going to keep buying it, they're going to keep buying it. You're right. There is a point of oversaturation, and they can't saturate the market with too many models because then it will start to become too confusing. It'll be too much. But at the same time, if the production costs for them to make all these different sizes don't really fluctuate hardly any and they're able to make a significant amount of more money for the people who do want the extra inch of tablet for some reason. Well, fine. Go ahead and let them make their money. That's just how I see it. Not that I have anything against it. Not that I hate it. It's just... It's okay. Just calm down, Tony. Chill out. There you go. There you go. There is my... <laughs> anyway. No, so, um, yeah, but that's, that's just... It doesn't. It's... Like I said, they can do... If they, they're, if they do keep doing this, and they flood the market, and they hurt their sales. It's their fault for doing so. Um, if it costs them significantly more money to make these individual sizes, and they keep costing a lot of money to make this stuff happen, and they're doing this, then yeah, they're making stupid mistakes. But if the cost, I mean, is how that how more, do their stockholders feel? And that's what oh, I they probably know. hate it. Well, you know what? They probably are going to the stockholders. I'm, I'm it's probably they're probably saying, look, we can make this tablet an inch larger. It's going to cost thirty dollars more to make, and we can sell it for two hundred and fifty dollars more. We're going to gain an extra 20, like 15% more on this tablet than we do the others. We're not expecting to sell it, but we're going to easily make our money back after we sell a quarter of what we're going to produce. And you don't think like, that they should? <laughs> I, I guess my whole point of the article when I wrote it was there's you know the sweet spot, you know that that special screen size of that is going to cater to a huge section of the market. I, I think we've hit it. It's it's around five, but not above five point five. Because above five point five, you know, you got the Galaxy Note, and that's only like a very specific section of the people. That's that's catering to a a, a small niche of the market, big enough to make a to make a deal of it, but it's still small compared to all the other uh, all the other phones, and I, I just think they're, they're going too much into the screen size, and they should be going into, if you want to talk screen, improve the quality of the screen. You know, Samsung, they do they do screens. I mean, that's their other big business. You know, they, they did screens for Apple. So um, maybe work on a 4K display. You know, I know, I know LG was talking about um, being one of the first phones to actually have uh, 4K display with uh, with one of Qualcomm's um, latest processor, or was it Qualcomm or NVIDIA? I forget. But in any case, um, maybe that's what they should be focusing on. Not size of the screen, but quality of the screen. Yeah, I, like I said, if it doesn't cost them any more to make it, screw it, why not? And you know what? This is, this is just no different from Apple like juicing the old screen for the longest time before they do the retina displays. And now they're going to use the retina displays on a lot of new products over and over again until they come up with something new. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a newer display, and it's going to be bigger. Then all of a sudden, slowly but surely, they're going to trickle in the new, dis new display. It's just that I think Samsung just doesn't do as good of a – they don't market the names like Apple does, like the retina display. Samsung is just there. That's just their display. I don't know. I, I just – 
I think they're just using the same display because they probably have so many units and are producing them. They probably cost a little money to them, and they can get a great picture out of it. Screw it. Why, why change what isn't broken? All right. Well, in in the news of something that is changing, and it wasn't really broken, but they, <laughs> they're changing it to make it a little bit better. Uh, Google and Android ha have updated the Google Play Store for both um, Android phones and tablets, and um, basically, uh, it, it's a card-like design. So uh, it, it takes the form of like uh, it's very quick and easy. You know, and you are able to kind of scroll through uh, your favorite music, the best-selling books. You know, download download uh, like your favorite game. Um, by the way, I think some Disney games are are free right now on Android. Uh, but yeah, I I think it's rolling out slowly but surely, and uh, you should notice it on your phone. I I try to look on my phone to see if the new store was uh, was updated. It hasn't updated on mine yet. Mm -hmm. Um. I know that the APK for the store is available. If you go to fandroid.com or androidcentral.com, they've got the APKs. You do not have to have your phone rooted to be able to look at it. Um, but just be forewarned, it, it's not really directly from Google, but I don't, um, I don't see any reason why you uh, should have any problem with it. But, yeah, for me, I'm just kind of a wait-and-see kind of guy for, for this because it's not a big deal. It's not going to make my phone better, but it's just going to be... Um, a cleaner experience when you're going through the Google Play Store on your on your mobile device. So, so do you like how it's designed now? I think it's fine. I mean, compared to what it was when it first came out, to the design that I have right now before this latest design that came out like yesterday, mm -hmm. I I was happy about that upgrade. I was like, ooh, this is really nice. You know, I think it was the ice cream sandwich upgrade um, that that made it. It was very blocky, but I didn't mind that. I like that. This. You know it's, it's the give... card. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, go on. No, I was gonna say this. It, it keeps the blockiness of it, but it has this kind of card-like uh, feature. So, and well, nice. I can just realize that you know what the Google Play Music Store is recommending for me. Oh no! Share turn back time. Remember from last night? Remember the last oh, conversation we had on last yeah. night's show? <laughs> we were talking. <laughs> so when I looked it up, the YouTube video, I guess they're like, oh, you must like Cher. <laughs> oh, God. oh, dang you, Google. <laughs> so that means any music video that you want to look up just for the hell of it, it's going to think you want to actually download that music. Yeah. The whole album apparently is available for nine dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at this. So I don't know, dude. I don't. Re I don't even remember what the old store looked like. But this store is definitely better. But at the same time, I don't really like this store layout. So I'm I'm actually itching to see this new one. I can't wait to get get hands on it. But no, it hasn't updated for me either. Maybe they're doing a you California know, rollout last. I remember when they did the the update from the old store to the new store. And I don't know what it was specifically, but I remember some people really petitioning to go back to the original look. That's I don't, I, people don't like, like the change. change. That's yeah. all it is. I, mean, you, I, I, know, I know that. Yeah, that's all it is. But, so that's what I like about this one. It's not a drastic change. So You still have the blockiness of it, but it they just kind of added... A few new things, and specifically this, once again, card-like UI. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and end this on an app update. Now, Sean, you being our sound guru and sound guy, and that's the name that you're going to take forever and ever. Yeah, apparently so. There's a new app, or not a new app, but there's an update to an app for, uh, for iOS from Mackie. So uh, why don't you go ahead and explain all this uh, Jim Jam too. These All right. Here. So this Jim Jam Jibber Jabber stuff that we're going to talk about here on this here update is about this. If you happen to be an, an owner of the Mac, you control. Actually, look, the DO uh, was the 1608 and the now 6806 models of mixers are a, set, a line of mixers made created by Mackie that pretty much use an iPad as an interface. You plug everything into this box, all the connections go there. You, you connect it to an iPad and you can walk around the room and mix remotely with this iPad. Essentially that 
That's what it comes down to. The system's been out since last year. It's been doing extremely well. They got a lot of cool features for it, and there's been another update, and this up, new update is actually adding on vintage-style compressors and vintage-style EQ. So if you're doing a recording and you're listening to it, and you, maybe you're kind of into an old vintage-sounding, a vintage sound out of your deal, or if you're doing mixing and recording, you trust me, you'll know if you're into that kind of vintage sound. Then, um, yeah, you could pretty much just Mackie update now allows you to do so. The update's free. All you gotta do is just go download download the file, get it updated. Now you have a couple of new compressors and new cues to play with at your fingertips. So, pretty cool. Check it out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, so, dude. Simple and sweet. <laughs> so, no. I'm just... Yeah. Um, okay, how about this? Mackie's funny. <laughs> there you go. Cool. There you go. I had a little bit more to it. <laughs> no, I was, I was just going to ask. Um, mm. could, so could you really just use all of this, like, all mobile? No. And, it's, it, it, they, hook up, they, they hook up via, I forget if it's Wi-Fi or some other connection to each other. When you hook, it, every, there is a physical box, a physical mixer that everything still plugs into. So there's not really anything mobile. There's still cables what ran all over the place. This just allows the sound person who's usually, who's a many times in smaller venues on the side of the stage rather than in front of the stage to walk out in front of the stage and make adjustments to the sound without having to run back and forth. Hmm. I've done it enough times to know it is a pain in the butt. You, what you do is you you make an adjustment, you run all the way to the front while the band is playing. You listen, then you run all the way back and you make an adjustment. Then you run all the way back to see if you know what you like what you did. If you didn't, you run all the way back. You make back and you run all the way back. And depending on the amount of drunk people you're fighting to get to the middle of that stage, it starts to become not worth it. It's like you know what? I will get paid enough for this. Yeah. I hate you all. Just you, you learn how to mix from the side. You learn, it's amazing how like I've gotten to the point where I can mix without hearing it. I, I've gotten to the point where I can just hear it through a wall. I'm like, oh, I already know that's too much bass. Okay, I already know, and I'm actually being able to put it together because I've done it so long. It's get, it's a skill you don't want to have, but I apparently have learned. Learned. Oh, that sounds like a cool skill to have. No, it's a terrible. It, well, it's a good skill to have, but it's one you don't ever want to use because you don't ever want to be in that situation. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I can see that, you know, if, you, if you're somewhere where the sound engineer person just sucks at their job and, you're, and you just happen to say something and someone over here is like, oh, you know what, that's a good point. Why don't you come with me? You should help us out. I'm like, wait a minute, bro. I'm just here to watch the concert. No, 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 we need your help. That, that's when you, you flash a beer. I'm like, dude, bro, come on. Hey. Yeah. Hey, man, look. Hey, look, I'm a newbie. I'm the wrong guy to ask this question to right now, even though I just got there and I, have, I just barely took it for a first drink. I know it's not the same kind of uh, concept there, but to kind of compare it, you know, you, have, you've been in those situations where somebody says something, um, or for me, for example, I, I was at Best Buy and um, I saw somebody looking at computers and I, for whatever reason, I decide to say, oh, you know what? I just bought that computer over there. It's fantastic. It does everything I need. I, and mm -hmm. and that. then, but then he starts asking me, like, oh, help me out and buy, help me buy my no, next computer. No, no, <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. Here's the deal. You got You you have to learn this one again with the old sales hit and run tactic. You say it and go. And you know what? This is a really cool one right there. Anyway, go. <laughs> so before they can say, "Hey, can you help me on?" Who said that? Yeah, exactly. Was it Batman? <laughs> That's the trick, dude. It was Batman. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, Sean, thank you very much tonight. We we definitely talked a lot. Um, the PSA was great. A lot of in depth information about that. Um, you know, for those of you that are um, are right now listening to the podcast while you're driving, um, and the podcast ends, don't touch your um, but yeah, uh, if any of you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything that you want to kind of add to the show, or if you want to give us an email so we can add it to the next show, um, you know, com contact the whole group at comments at lazytechguys.com. Um, we have a Facebook page, obviously, uh, Facebook as uh, facebook.com slash lazytechguys, Twitter, Google Plus, um, Pinterest feed, and the only thing that's different is our YouTube channel, which is Lazy Tech TV, and you should be watching it on there right now. Sean, how can the wonderful group find you and and listen to your awesome music? All right. 
easy way. Okay, Twitter, I have an account, LTG Sean. Also, you can find me on Google Plus if you look deep enough. My name is Sean Wilburn, S E A N W I L B U R N. I also have a SoundCloud account, which is called under the name Sean Wilburn. <laughs> Would you believe it? And then you can go ahead and check out some of my music there and you can see a couple of tunes. I got a couple more things coming out very, very soon, including, I think, a Stevie Winter tune, which I did a long time ago. I'm going to put up. Pretty creative one, has talk boxes and pretty funny stuff inside of it. So. Hope you hope you dig it. Wait, you wrote a Stevie Wonder track? Yes, I wrote a Stevie Wonder song. No, I did not read it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it a year ago. I'm taking Stevie, that. Yes, Stevie I wrote Wonder a Stevie did. Wonder track. <laughs> hey, I got a chance to. I I met Stevie Wonder so much. I, got I know. Yeah, that's right. I, that's for real. That's no joke. So yeah, that's another reason to go check out my music. See, I actually met the man. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, as for me, you can find me on Twitter, LTG Tony. Uh, my About Me page is about me dot or about dot me slash Teen Ninja three thousand. And um, as for <laughs> as for all the other uh, information, contact the whole group. Comments at lazytechguys dot com. Um, we are the Lazy Tech Guys. This is the Wireless Weekly. Thank you very much for listening and watching us tonight. We're out of here. Have a good one. Good night. <laughs>